Okay. Yeah, we can so, see. Data log and why you should consider using it for your next project. So this is the talk and let's start by discussing a sort of motiv motivation for this that is related to the problems with the relational database management system. So uh, you might remember this one that was circulated in the development channels at least. And so when you're doing database, uh, relational database stuff, you'll have to future proof like different types of things will are not the same, don't have the same attributes uh, or the columns. And so you will be, when you're expanding to different things, you will need to decide if you want to make your tables wide or you need to do normalization mapping pretty awkwardly or then have a future proof stuff or table one style of schema. So your system is sort of composed of rectangles. So the data is always in rectangles. Everywhere are rectangles. So this is the wide, wide table problem. But your data is more often looks like a web or a tree. So this would this is what you would get if you would like normalize everything to the to its last last normal form. But what if I told you that there's a universal schema that exists also? So instead of using these rectangles, we could use a universal schema. And this is what the part two will be about. So the universal schema is basically EAV, so entity attribute value triple. So the E, uh, meaning the entity, is just a unique reference to some entity that you would have in your data model. It's the entity is sort of an ID for it. So it's a UUID, string, number, keyword, what, what have you. How do you, depends on how you want to reference your entities. And then the A is the name, usually here a keyword of the attribute. Same like you would have in relational database, the column name. But so it's, for example, employee's first name or manager of this department. And then the V part is the value, and that can be a single valued or a multi valued collection. And this can be anything that your database uh, supports. So the usual suspects, strings, numbers, dates, times, timestamps, UUIDs, keywords, and so on. And then there's sort of this mirror world in this W3 standard called RDF. So the brother from another mother is the resource description framework, which is sort of the same, but it instead of calling it EAV, it calls it subject, predicate, and object, and the subjects being identified by URIs. So let's take a look at the small world. So this is the entity attribute value. So your data consists of these triples. So that's the information you have about your entities. So this is an example of a very small, small world. And well, an entity can have any attribute. The allowed set of attributes is not limited. So any entity can have any attribute. Entity itself doesn't have a type unless you want to encode it yourself as a parameter, like type parameter or type attribute for, for the entities. So this was a very suitable for the Bohveli Kahvila setting on Friday afternoon, but I have, has, to, has to go now as well. So here we have some entities like Tatu, Sappe, and Devde. These are just identified by keywords. And then there's something like Tatu likes beer and Tatu is attending Dev Day. Then we have Sappe that has the visiting address and postal code. And the Dev Day event itself has some attributes like title, held at, and serves. And based on this very simple schema, we could ask questions like, where is beer served? Or who likes what? Or what events are held and where? And on what dates can Tatu get some beer? So this is the world as it stands. And next part is that we actually want to build a query to utilize this triple information. And this is a common worry that people have when using something other than relational database, because relational database are something that we all know. But there's no, no need to worry here. Uh, data log is actually pretty old. Well, it isn't new, let's say, like 
like that. SQL is only 12 years older from 74, but data log uh, appeared in the 80s, like most good things, it comes from, from the 80s. Uh, but in this talk, we will focus on the syntax that is popular in the closure-based data log implementations. So these include Datomic, XTDB, which is uh, formerly known as Crux, and then there's DataScript, DataLeave, and DataHike, Asami. So it's very popular in, in the closure space. And then here's the here's the GitHub page, closurelog.github.io, where you can look at the differences between these implementations. I will gloss over much of it. I won't focus on those. All the examples here will be in XTDB. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Uh, we have a question, that is the query. So who can enjoy a beverage they like and on what date? So this is what we want to answer. And here's the sort of uh, place or, or the boilerplate that does the query. So we have the xt slash q function, which does the query. Then we have this uh, function called db that will just give us a database value. And then we have a quoted, quoted data structure that is the query itself. So we're not passing strings, we're passing data structures here, and we can build them like we would any data manipulation enclosure. But here's the empty query, does nothing yet. First thing is to determine what do we want to solve for. So what is what should the result look like? So here we want to solve for who and date. And next we will then add the triple clauses that will constrain what to find. So these all, each of these where clauses are bindings for the EAV triple, triples that we have. So the first position in the vector is the E, the second is the A, and the last one is the V for the value. So here we have some, and this, um, we have some logic variables that we want to bind. And you can see these question mark, names beginning with question mark is a convention for logic variables. So those are the ones that we would solve for. Thing here is not defined yet. We have in the first clause, we have the thing. It's not defined yet. We'll get to that next. But here we have like the question mark who. The uh, different appearances of the who refer to the same thing. So next up, we want to give it some input parameters. So here we use the input list. Here we define the thing. Uh, and then we give it an actual parameter value of beer and then we can execute this. This is ready to be executed on the database. And we will get a set of tuples that satisfy all these conditions. So here we get uh, the who part, which would be the tattoo, and the uh, date part, which would be a local date for last Friday. And then we can also, furthermore, we can use a pull syntax. So instead of just pulling, for example, this question event, we can use pull to decide what attributes of this entity we would want to pull on at the same time. So we don't need to list everything, we can just pull, pull title and held on from the event, and it will be in the result as a map. So here we have the result tuple of Tatu and a map containing attributes of the uh, Dev Day 2021 event. So, and we can also use this pull syntax to recursively pull from even nested entities. So we can get a nested nested map structure out of this very conveniently. Uh, so what did we just see? So data log is a declarative logic based query language, operates on sets that satisfy some logic variable bindings. And query will never return the exact same result twice because it's a set. So like it would be possible in a relational database query. And there's no need for explicit joins like in SQL. An attribute value can reference another entity. And then pull syntax can be used to query multiple attributes. So let me check. Can you still hear me? Yeah. 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 It, there was just some notice about poor network quality. Okay. Let's continue. So uh, a world tour of what else can it do? So we can, of course, because if by default, the where clause are ended, uh, ended together, we can do logical or. And then we can have 
uh, efficient index range predicates. So, for example, if we have some number values or even string values or date values, we can query them with the less than or more than greater than operators, and they will efficiently be pulled from index. And then uh, XTDP has a separate Lucene index module that we can use to do uh, text searches. Uh, aggregation, of course, is required feature functionality. So here we could return all things and the count of how many people like them. So this would return like all items and how many people are liking them. And then we have the default set of available aggregates like sum, min, max, count, average, median, variance, and so on. And then you can, of course, create your own, own aggregates as well. And then another powerful, powerful feature of data log is rules. So rules are basically a, a powerful mechanism to describe reusable ways to arrive at a conclusion. And the rules will be passed into the query and can be used like predicates. So the same rule can have multiple different implementations. So the rule head describes sort of the signature, like you would in functions, of the rule. Uh, and so that consists of the name and what logic variables it binds. And then the rule body contains any where clauses, like in the regular where clause we just saw. And rules can contain other rule invocations as well. So recursive rules are very easy to do here. And let's take a look at an example. So consider this uh, ancestry information like we have from Alice right down to uh, Fiona. So Bob has a parent, Alice, Charlie has a parent, Bob, so and so on, right down to Fiona. So with rules, we can make up make up a rule called ancestor of that will take a child and an ancestor. Uh, and this rule, as you can see, it has two uh, different implementations. So the first one is the, uh, the upper one has the child parent ancestor here. Uh, and this is just to check that this ancestor is the direct parent of this child. And then we have another implementation of the same rule where we bind a new bind the child's uh, parent to parent and check recursively that is this uh, ancestor or ancestor of the parent. So this this is all you need to do a recursive query. And if you run it like this with the uh, data you we, we just saw, we will get 15 results. Like all children with all their uh, ancestors will satisfy this. But of course, we can also decide that we want to bind uh, bind the child. So we can query like, who are all the ancestors of Charlie? And we get Bob and Alice pairs there. Or we could leave the child unknown and bind the ancestor as an input parameter. And then we get whose ancestor is Charlie? So these are very uh, reusable because we don't even need to decide what we are going to bind uh, beforehand. And then we can, of course, we could bind both the child and the ancestor to simply check if someone is someone's ancestor. Okay, uh, next up is uh, history. Both XTDP and Datomic preserve full history. So this is not universal for like data log implementations, but a uh, very convenient one in the most used uh, implementations. So you can time travel to what the state of your application was at any given time. So you can ask it for a database value given a timestamp or a transaction ID. So you can get this value and running queries from that will always give you the same results. So imagine having a log that says you have an exception here. Like in your production environment, you get an exception for some query, for example, then you could you could load the copy of the database in your REPL and ask it for the same timestamp as the log entry and try it yourself. So no matter how many transactions have been run after that, you can always return to it to a previous state. Uh, side note here is that XTDP does actually provide a transaction operation called evict that you can use to delete from history, but that's mainly for GDPR compliance and things like that. Not normally uh, used. 
And also the history API sort of allows speculative databases. So you can get a database value from some point and then get uh, or submit additional transactions to that that are not visible anywhere else, just for that database handle that you have. And you can run queries across these speculative databases. In, in, or in, uh, in essence, you can say, what would this query return if I had run this transaction? So briefly, we can look at the uh, storage. So the, this differs a bit uh, from imp depending on implementation, but both Datomic and XTDP store the actual EAV data in separate indexes. So there's covering indexes. All the information is in the indexes and actually multiple times. So we can have multiple indexes or, or actually the information is copied a couple of times to all the indexes. So there's no, and we can answer the queries based on the indexes only. And transactions are stored in a shared place that has ACID guarantees, for example, Postgres or Kafka. But indexes are stored locally on each node. So each node in a cluster that you want to service things will have its own copy of the information, all the information in the database. So we have, for example, the EAV index, like, like just the basic, basic format. This can quickly access all attributes of an entity. And then there's the AVE index that can quickly find entities with a match, matching a given attribute value or range. So these are useful for the range predicates, like we saw previously. And then XTDP has a separate optional Lucene index that indexes all string values and can quickly find text matches for entities attribute values by, for a specific attribute or all attributes. And then Datomic has this VAE index that is used for quickly finding any referring entities that refer to this entity or, or some entity. So uh, let's take a quick look at the trade-offs. Our Lord and Savior, Rich Hickey, once said that programmers know the benefits of everything and the trade-offs of nothing. So let's try to be conscious of these trade-offs that there's not only the good, but we have the good here. So this programming model is very convenient. So we can store key value maps, fetch key value maps, even nested key value maps and collections very convenient like we do in other closure programs all the time, or we pr process them in closure all the time. But we still have this rich, very rich query power available. And then we have immutability. So data accumulates and can return to previous versions. Like, like I just discussed, this is very good for debugging. And then there's the storage is cheap. So like there's no need to make a comp complicated setups to remove old values because storage is cheap. We can do this immutability stuff easily now. And then co-location is one of the good parts, but the data is co-located with the code that queries and processes it. So it doesn't matter how many round trips to the database you want to do. So you can just ask for a database value and you can do one query for it, or you can do 100 queries for it. It doesn't matter because the data is in the same process memory space as you have the qu query engine. So you can use the same, same programming language. You don't have to send queries over there across the network. It's just the data is here for you to process as you need. And there's no, yeah. No stored procedures as well. Just use the same language. But then there's this uh, the bad stuff. So if you if you remember the funny MongoDB's web scale video, this is probably not web scale in that sense, because transactions are processed serially or serially and guaranteed consistency. So there's no. This isn't like uh, like some other NoSQL database where you get eventual consistency or. But here we are actually have the transaction log is serial. And so all the indexing nodes will have the same information and guaranteed. And it's not very suitable for high write speed operations. So that's something to take into account. More on that a little bit later. And then, of course, learning new things will take time. So there's no denying the fact that people who have been using SQL for 20 years and running it in production, it's, it's a different model. And it has totally different operational characteristics in production. And of course, you can throw your intuition around 
query planners and SQL optimization just out the window. And then there's the perhaps not ugly, but not conventionally attractive to many people. So I would say there's two choices for production use in the JVM slash closure space, both these being Datomic and XTDB. Uh, and Datomic is proprietary. So you will either pay, pay a per system license fee for the on-premises version, or you will pay a in the AWS marketplace uh, per hour costs. It's not, it's not uh, expensive, but yeah, the, you need to pay for it. But yeah, I, I think Datomic is a otherwise rock solid uh, database to use because New Bank, the people who bought Cognitect, now own Datomic, are actually using it to run a bank. So it's solid. But then XDDB is open source, but not as mature in some places. So it's unbundled by nature, so you can use it in a many different types of environments, and you can configure it to use different types of indexing uh, library for the local indexes and different types of storage for the transaction log and the document store. So to make encounter rough edges, like I just fixed a PR related to Lucene snapshots causing a very slow startup, ta startup time. But then again, it is open source, so you can actually investigate the problems yourself. But yeah, maturity is one one issue here. And then I would say the when to use is when your system is on the JVM, so using Closure for the best experience. And yeah, I jokingly said that this is actually universally true, not just in this context. Always use Closure. And then your system is sort of quote unquote human sized, as in you actually have like the data coming into the system is people filling out forms on the website like we do in many cases. And you need, big plus is that if you need auditability and history of all your data, then these are, are absolutely a godsend for those because you don't need to do anything. You can always query the history. You can look at the history of particular entities without doing anything yourself. So it's built in from the ground up. And then I would say like, your sizes in gigabytes, not terabytes. But actually, the XTD big guys on on the closure and Slack said that they have some customers who are using petabytes in this like LMDB. And but yeah, I would I don't have experience about that large, but I would say in the gigabyte range because, like I said, this information will be copied to all the nodes in the cluster. So each one of your sort of application server nodes will need to have. Uh, memory and storage to st store all the uh, local indexes. And so I wouldn't use it for IoT stuff where you need to ingest thousands of items per second. So that's that's probably something that you'll want to use eventual consistency stuff instead of this one. And then you want to use something better than uh, SQL. That's again my opinion. But both uh, XTDP and Datomic they do have a way sort of uh, to provide SQL support for this analytics people. So you can actually configure in Datomic, you can configure a meta schema that you can query with SQL. And in uh, XTDP, you can query sort of functions that provide support for tables using Apache CalSite. So there is an escape hatch that you can hook this to Tableau or Metabase or some other analytics tool. But yeah, this SQL support isn't sort of the development programming model, it's not meant for that. So I wouldn't use it for that. Let's see. Okay, that's that's the uh, presentation. And there's a data log channel recently uh, made on Slack. Not, not much discussion there yet, but if you want to ask questions, that's one place to do it. And I can say that I've been using this, like we used Datomic in a, in, in a previous project and now we're using XTDP and yeah I, I think the experience has been good good so far. Perhaps I need to do another another presentation about what, what it's like when you've been in production for a few years. Yeah. That's it. Thank you all. Is there any questions now that you want to ask? Uh, 
one thing one thing I was wondering is that how does data log compare to a more traditional SQL implementation uh, performance wise? Uh, yeah, that's sort of devil in the details. Uh, you would need to do performance testing based on your own uh, use cases, but like like I said, that everything is in the index. So I would say the query performance has been pretty good, but of course the like because everything is in the indexes and they're covering all data, so the write performance isn't as good as like let's say Postgres or many things. So that's why I said that you shouldn't use it for like IoT stuff, ingesting thousands of things per second. But query query should be on on par with SQL, I, I'd say. Because the local indexes, there's there's a, you can choose what you use for the local indexes. Like there's support for LMDB that is used in the Open LDAP, so it's a memory mapped database in memory. And then there's RocksDB, which is actually developed by Facebook. That's another option for the local indexes. So, and these are all sort of B3 indexes that you can that can do range queries. So should be pretty good, but yeah, perhaps perhaps do some performance testing if you have a huge use case. One more question. How would you compare Datomic and XDDB? Which one is your favorite? Well, uh, both are good. Uh, like both have different uh, good sides. Uh, I think Datomic has a lighter weight uh, data model. It's just the entity attribute value when XTDP itself is a sort of a document store. So you doc uh, everything is stored as documents and then indexed for the triples. And But yeah, I, I think that XTDP, because it's open source and it has the uh, Lucene indexing module, I think that's a very good solution, a very good choice for many, many people. But yeah, if you want, want like rock solid stuff with uh, good support that you can trust, then yeah, Datomic I would use. But yeah, poor answer because there I don't have a clear favorite. But yeah, for most cases, probably use use XTDB because it's open source and so easy to get started with. Okay, thanks. I think it was a good good answer. Okay. Okay, that's the, all the time we have. Thank you, everyone.